This is going to be the coolest Megadeth story you've ever heard. Garen Flippin' Teague. So, when I was a teenager, I was so into Megadeth. <laughs> they were my thing, man. I used to like to say I had a Megadeth shirt for every day of the week. Not so sure how accurate that was, but I had them all. <laughs> okay, I probably didn't have them all, but I had most of them. And, um... It was just my thing, man. They used to call me... Some people called me Mega. Some people called me a Hesher. Blah, blah, blah. So... Dave Mustaine, Dave Ellefson, Gar Samuelson, Chris Poland. <laughs> Those guys were all over my walls, man. All over my walls. And in my head. Well, their music was in my head. So, I used to actually lay there like I was just laying, like taking a nap and just crank Megadeth and listen. Now, their music was great. I love, I did love their music. Their musicianship, Dave Mustaine's musicianship is exceptional. Yeah, we'll give him that. So, and to shed a little light, here's, here was me back then. That was me. <laughs> that was a Grateful Dead t-shirt, but whatever. Wasn't quite into Megadeth as much at that time, but soon thereafter so at any rate here goes here's the cool story that I'm going to tell you so when I was about 18 I was getting on a bus in Reno Nevada where I lived at the time and I was wearing one of my favorite Megadeth shirts it had Vic Rattlehead on there he's their mascot for those of you who don't know an imaginary mascot of course it's this skeleton with a metal plate over his mouth and over his eyes and plugs in his ears. Basically, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil is the idea. Anyways, so this particular shirt that I was wearing showed Vic coming straight at you holding a bloody axe. Okay? Not your uh, not your grandmother's t-shirt. Alright? So, I thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread, of course, because I mean, who wouldn't, right? So, at any rate, I'm getting on the bus there in Reno that day. And I'm standing in line. And ahead of me in line to get on the bus is this little kid. He's probably four. Little boy. Holding his mom's hand. He's all happy, you know, just smiling and gibbering on. Doing what four-year-old happy kids do. And he turns around. He looks at me with a big smile on his face. And then he glances down and he sees my shirt. And he gets this horribly scared expression on his face. And he like grabs his mom's hand and like clings to her and gets as flipping far away from me as he can get. Even at 18 with my limited intelligence, I could tell something was wrong in River City. And needless to say, that was the last time I ever wore a Megadeth shirt. Since then, I've learned a lot, and it's really got me thinking. I've learned that everybody in life has a measure of influence. Everybody. Okay? And what people do with that influence is incredibly important. Particularly, how people use that influence, choose to use that influence on kids, is even infinitely more important okay everybody is going to influence children at some point in their lives pretty much guaranteed even if it's the tiniest sliver okay there might be a few monks living in the hills that'll never influence children or you know a few people who are incarcerated there there are a few people in the world who will never influence children okay but for the most part we all will at some point even if it's a tiny bit even if you don't work with kids, even if you don't have kids, kids are going to see you at some point, okay? So, how we influence children is, like, infinitely important. And I learned that lesson that day. And I've been learning it ever since, okay? So, that got me to thinking about all these bands that I used to listen to back then. Megadeth, Metallica, ACDC, oh, you know... The Scorpions. There was a whole ton back then. I'm old, right? <laughs> this is in the 
late 80s, early 90s. Some of the bands were okay, but most of them sucked. Okay? And it made me think about influence. These people had a lot of influence, okay? And there's a ton of bands today that are the same. They all suck just as bad. Their music may be cool, but what they're doing with their influence really blows. So all these bands have influence, and they may not be aiming their music at kids, but it doesn't matter because kids get exposed to it no matter how much parents try to keep it from them. We all know that. We're not stupid. So all these bands have influence on kids, okay? And not only bands, but people who make movies, people who make art, people who write books, um, teachers, preachers, pastors, you name it. There are tons of people in life who have influence on children. Some of them intentionally because of their jobs, right? And some of them just indirectly, okay? And what are they doing with that influence, okay? In my particular case, I planted a seed of fear in that little boy's heart and mind. And that I will never do again. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Thank you, Lord. But a lot of these people don't seem to learn their lessons. Like, I see bands like Metallica who are still going strong today. And what are they doing with their influence? Well, a few of their songs are good. Okay, I knew their lyrics back then. Some of their songs had good messages. But the majority of them suck. Bad. <laughs> okay? And those songs are influencing children. They're influencing adults more, but they influence children. Anybody who claims it doesn't is just completely ignorant, okay? Yes, parents should keep them away, but they don't. We all know that doesn't work. Hardly ever. Sometimes, but rarely. So, what are they doing with their influence? They're using their influence to influence children in the absolute worst flipping things. <laughs> like, just horrible things. If you know any of the lyrics to all those... Their songs, Metallica, Megadeth, and again, there's some good ones, I know that. All those bands back there, and then I think about guys like Eminem, and, you know, he just sings about his abusing his girlfriend and just, you know, hating his mom. And, and I get it, he had some shit going on in his life, I understand that. But, like, the point is, is that people have to think about how they're influencing kids. Because we all do, okay? And I guarantee at some point, Here's somebody who says, oh, it's my freedom. It's their freedom. You're advocating censorship, Jesse. What I'm advocating is people censoring themselves. I don't need censorship to censor myself, okay? Out of love, for love, because I love people and care about how I'm influencing them. I censor and govern myself for love of other people because I realize that I'm influencing them. And hardly any of these bands do that. Now, I've heard a few. I've heard a few. My best friend in the world, he actually turned me on to one band that actually did that very well. They realized they were wrong, and they came out and they said it, and they changed their ways. Okay? Some people do. But the majority of them don't. They just keep on writing crap and garbage and influencing more and more people, adults and children. Like, millions of them, man. It's like... So here's the key, like, freedom that is not governed by love will always hurt somebody, always. That's why freedom cannot be our highest value, it just can't. Because when freedom is a person's highest value, then love will take a back seat, love being the desire to benefit others at, at my own expense, if necessary, right? Love is the desire to benefit others at my expense, okay, which means I censor myself and I govern myself so I don't hurt people, <laughs> okay? So all these people say, oh, you can't censor me. Well, you should be censoring yourself out of love for people. Hope you enjoyed this cool Megadeth story. Have a nice day.